Hello, fellow Earthlings, planet positive people. Welcome to the Eco Fix, the show where I tell you about everything from common sense simple fixes to high tech innovations that will reverse runaway problems like climate change and the marine plastic pollution crisis. We're about to go behind the scenes and meet the incredible cast of characters, the scientists, the activists, the engineers, the environmental leaders, the thought leaders, the bold politicians, and then the ultimate political shakeup artists, the citizens just like you who are working hard to get this planet back on track and make it a better place. You may not realize how many incredible solutions are already up and running or soon will be. These are the eco stories you need to know. Let's start with our warming planet. One of the things we have to do is lower our carbon emissions. Don't believe me? What about the peak we got into what happens when we stop using carbon spewing fossil fuels during the quarantines to stop the spread of the coronavirus? Check out the satellite imagery of the drastic drop in air pollution over China during their lockdown of February and March. Now, I'm not saying we all have to stay at home forever to stop climate change. There is another way. If we have a world powered by wind, water and solar rather than coal, oil and gas, we would cut our carbon dioxide emissions by 55%. That is huge. Which brings me to my very special guest, Mark Ruffalo. He's probably most famous for playing Bruce Banner, a.k.a. The Hulk, the Avengers movie hero. During a 30-year career as an actor, producer, and director, he's received three Academy Award nominations. He has won numerous Film Critic and Screen Actors Guild Awards for the intense and beautifully nuanced characters he brings to life on screen. Off screen, he is a tireless, larger-than-life environmental and social justice advocate. He's an anti-fracking crusader. He's on a mission to bring clean water and clean energy to all all of America. He has hosted bus tours through neighborhoods in Los Angeles where underrepresented communities live right alongside toxic oil acidizing operations. He narrated and produced the documentary Dear President Obama, The Clean Energy Revolution Is Now. Mark is also the co-founder of the Solutions Project, a one-stop renewable energy shop. Back when Mark was fighting to get fracking banned in his home state of New York, he asked Stanford environmental engineer Mark Jacobson if New York could possibly run on 100% renewable energy. In less than 24 hours, Jacobson produced a 30-page document proving that, yes, it could be done. The two Marks joined forces and the Solutions Project was born. They now have blueprints for the whole of the U.S. and most countries in the world running on 100% wind, water, solar. Mark and I had a low carbon Zoom sit down during the coronavirus shelter in place, AKA stay at home orders. And uh, black frame glasses <laughs> that are slightly tinted. Because <laughs> oh. then we get the, the denim and stereo. Yes, that's really nice. <laughs> After we got the important stuff sorted, we got into the lessons coming out of this pandemic. You know, what's interesting is, which I don't think we've really gotten into yet, is, is the amount of data that's going to be, um, that's going to come out of this time that we couldn't get any other way. And, and, I, and I just think what we're going to see is, first of all, how resilient um, Mother Nature is. And um, the other thing is just, um, you know, how, how impactful this lack of carbon is going to be um, just on on everything from air quality to water quality um, to to quality of life. These are things that we couldn't have, couldn't have measured any other way. I do you think that now that we've glimpsed what a world post carbon um, could could be and feel and look like, we we have a we have kind of a, a true north. We kind of have a, an idea of where we could head. Taking our foot off the pedal just for this few months is going to lessen our carbon emissions by 8% this year. Yeah. But, you know, how can we make that, you know, more long-term? I guess the other gift of this time is, is it what it exposes in the systems that we're living in now. Um, and, and what really is, is apparent is the inequity of, of the system. Um, that whole groups of people, races of people, people of color are, are, being, are being left out and are being um, marginalized. And, you know, COVID-19 could be viewed also as a, um, just a concentrated form of, carb of, of climate change. 
all of the systems that we need to be healthy in order to handle climate change with any kind of grace happen to be all the same systems that um, that are uh, showing weakness with COVID-19. Our healthcare system, our food systems, our, our worker, working class systems, um, our, our economic system. We're leaving this carbon um, paradigm behind. It, it's just, it's just a better system ahead of us. And it's more, you know, solar is, I think a year away from being uh, cheaper than, than coal or, or gas or natural gas. Wind is already there. Um, we finally have the economic uh, wind in our sails to, to, to make this transition. But how do we do it is the question, right? What you're asking. There's, it's going to happen one way or another. The writing's on the wall. This reality we're experiencing now is only going to compound. Uh, we, COVID-19 has forced us to change our behavior. Um, we had a choice in how we were going to approach climate change maybe 10, 20 years ago. We even have a little bit of a choice today. But the window on our choices are closing. And, and so we're going to be forced to face a reality that will uh, make us change, force us to change our behavior, just like what's happening with COVID today, as I see it. And I've seen in the last you know, eight years, people's minds change radically on the idea of climate change, on the idea of, the, uh, of, of renewable energy and the, and the actual um, implementation of it. The renewable energy revolution is happening. You know, I mean, we can have a government like the government that we have right now in the US that's really dragging its feet and is, you know, holding on to the, you know, their bad boyfriend, the fossil fuel industry, you know, like, a, you know, I mean, they should have kicked that guy to the curb a long time ago, as we know. Yeah, it's a lousy um, boyfriend. Is it always going to be on civil society to keep pushing our leaders to be doing the right things? I mean, hasn't it always been, even like in New York State, you know, we, Governor Cuomo was was well on well down the road of, of fracking New York State and um, and 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 we used the stick and the carrot you know we we you know and I I've really come to admire the guy because he turned it around you know he was a full on fossil fuel guy he believed that's where the jobs were for the state he believed that's where where income from the state was and and we put in front of him Mark Jacobson's plan to take you know, New York State to 100% renewable energy. Um, we bird dogged him. We, um, we made his life uncomfortable. Well, at the same time, we were always offering a graceful exit that would be better for the New York State economy and better for the resiliency of New York State. And we had some help by Mother Nature. And that was a wake up call. Mother Nature forced us to, to face a reality that we were um, in, a, in, in denial of. And then once that reality showed itself, we had to change our behavior. And now this governor is taking New York State to 100% renewable energy uh, faster than anybody else. And that was the whole principle of the Solutions Project. That's why it was called Solutions. It was to, it was to offer a science-based, economy-based, community-based, um, anecdote to, to the, the problems that we we're facing with climate change and fossil fuel production. I tell people about the Solutions Project all the time because when I heard Mark talk at the other Mark uh, talk at UCLA once and he sort of he said look I've got these blueprints for how the whole world you know we switch to you know wind water solar and I'm like, okay, this is like a magic trick this guy's got for, you know, the renewable energy revolution. And, but, you know, when he said, you know, if we put solar panels on all existing roofs, not build new buildings, but just all existing roofs, that would be 11% of the world's electricity generated like that. Listen, when we started the solution project, I mean, it wasn't that long ago that we were being laughed out of the room of every major green organization, NRDC, Sierra Club, 
People just thought we were crazy. They just, the, there was no imagination in the world that we would, we would ever see a time in our lifetimes where we were able to move off of fossil fuels, either because of the politics or just because people's ignorance to, to, to the issue. And I guess that's what the Solutions Project was really about, was, was creating a space of possibility using science, because we all felt it and we all, we all, anyone who's been fighting for this for the last 30 years and saw climate change on the horizon, mm. all knew we had to make this transition, but no one believed it was possible. And there wasn't enough science backing it up. And economically, we just weren't in the right place, but now we are. I, I, I think like we're close to some sort of tipping point and that COVID could kind of tip us over because, you know, if not now, when, and the when is here. I do. I think this is an assist and and we have to start imagining that you know the beauty of this new world we're talking about we actually don't have to imagine it we get to see it in real time we get to see Los Angeles's air clean up and stay that way for you know two months we get to see Delhi clean up we get to see the swans and the animals and the fish come back into the canals of Venice we get to see um, we get to see that we don't have to have this busyness. We, we, we can enjoy our families and the quality of our lives without all of this. I'm never gonna do uh, disposable travel again. You know, the, the, we have this technology, it works great, okay? I don't have to go to LA for a meeting. I don't wanna go, to, I don't wanna get in a plane. We yeah. have proof of concept that, that we, we can live this way and we're actually living better. Now the question is, is making sure that we all get to enjoy this and not just a few of us. But there's more, like Mark Jacobson's work on, on the jobs. We're going to create 5 million jo more jobs than we lose by transitioning away from fossil fuels. I don't think people get how great renewable energy is going to be for us on so many different levels. I agree, which is why we have you, Belinda, because you're going to tell these stories. And that's why you have the show. And that's why the show is important. Like, I watch your stuff. Your take is, is the possibility. And, and that's what life is, is, is possibility. And so that's the story you're telling. And, um, <laughs> you got a big job ahead of you. And <laughs> I'm happy to, to assist you. Thank you so much. You're amazing. Keep it up, Belinda. You're amazing. Thank you for all that you do, Mark. You too, pal. Really. Okay. All right. Love your shirt. <laughs> <laughs> right back at you. So what do we know now that we didn't know before? Instead of the carbon reducing baby steps that we've been resisting taking because we thought they'd be too hard, we got forced into extreme carbon emission reductions mode. And it wasn't so bad. We learned to socialize and do our work via Zoom. We had a really nice time staying close to home and being with our kids, mostly. What about for those of us who commute the huge benefits? I mean, no jet lag, thousands of hours of productive work time and precious family time all gained back. Not to mention saying goodbye to the health impacts of a commute like this twice a day, every day. With Zoom and remote working, it's gone. Twitter, Google, Facebook, they are all talking about remote working being more of a norm for their employees. Better for their employees, better for the planet. The European Union is investing heavily in the green sector as part of their coronavirus recovery economic planning. There are also cities that are so thrilled with their blue, clean skies that they are putting in more bike paths and bike-friendly commuter systems. They're Copenhagenizing. The renewable energy solution is more than just a possibility. Solar generation has increased by 5,000% in the past decade. There is enough wind in Texas, Kansas, and North Dakota to power the continental US from coast to coast. It's now time for eco fixations, the everyday things we can do to be part of the fix. One of the biggies is what a more sustainable relationship with plastic looks like. I met up with comedian, actress, producer, published author, and the first Latina to have her own primetime television show, Cristela Alonso, to get her take on where we're going wrong. Cristela is an eco nerd and a wannabe astronaut. Check out her NASA leisure wear. She also challenges the very idea of single use and what disposable means. 
So we're doing a park up, you know, kind of cop and informant style, except uh, today we've got a NASA astronaut <laughs> and me. Stop. The word disposable is just a suggestion. Everything <laughs> that people say is disposable is not disposable. If I buy a disposable razor and I use it once, and I can still use it twice. I'm not gonna have that moment where like, whoa, well, I'm supposed to use it once. If it works, it works, right? So I will use it again, especially traveling when I'm on the road doing shows. I don't have the ability to pack all this stuff. So I try to reuse as much as I can. That's the thing that people don't understand. When you grow up with the disposable cups, disposable plates, uh, my family used plastic, you know, like styrofoam plates, like they were real plates, you know, so we would like, we would eat and then we would wash it and then boom, we had more plates, you know. So. First generation Mexican American, you know, we really didn't have a lot of money. So we were very, uh, you know, we were like MacGyvers, right? You had to create your own thing, you know, had to make them last, right? So it was this thing where, you know, when I was a little kid, we used to have the gallons of milk. Right, and after we'd finished the gallons of milk, every once in a while, we would cut the top of the gallon of milk and we would store our tools in it. We had no toolbox. We didn't even know toolboxes existed. We had no idea because the idea of keeping tools in a box that's more expensive than the tools had made no sense to us. So that was my life. That was my existence. Then I moved to Los Angeles, which is this big city where everybody just, everybody, has to have plastic everything the, the amount of privilege that they have in the way that they eat out in the way that they shop you know you go to a grocery store and the grocery store will get an orange and peel it for you and then put it in a plastic container because god knows we don't have the time to peel Like I, I'm, I'm obsessive about composting. <laughs> like I do not want to put any scrap of anything that could rot into um, the garbage. Do you go into the garbage sometimes and take out food if someone's accidentally put food? All the time, all the time. Like what? What is this? This is the, this doesn't go in here. How many times do I got to tell you? Like you know, banana peels are not like. They, they 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 break down in the compost bin, you know. If it smells bad in two days, it's biodegradable. <laughs> so this is the eco fix shot during quarantine. Next time I'll be talking wind turbines with Mark Jacobson. In the meantime, I'll leave you with some eco fixing resources. Check out the Solutions Project website. Get inspired, get involved, and if you qualify for a grant, get assistance with renewable energy for your community. Start composting, get a bin. The FCMP tumbling composter is great, or get a service. Nearly half the world's solid waste is organic and biodegradable, so composting really lowers carbon emissions. Ask Mark if you don't believe me. Voting is the most important action you can take right now. Find the best Green New Deal candidates to back on the Sunrise Movement's website. See you soon for your next EcoFix.